Hey everybody, what's up? This is Chip Walters and today I want to talk a little bit about ribbing and rib details as they pertain to plastic parts, die cast parts, and machine parts. As you can see in these different pictures, ribbing is a very valuable construct for creating manufactured parts. And one of the keys to making realistic designs is understanding that these ribs can play a part in your overall design. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I'll switch over to here. This is a, an example of a ribbed arm of some kind with a little brass bushing in it. And the idea being that, as you can see, this is a machined part. And as a machined part, it has some ribs in here that basically remove a lot of the weight of the object. So it makes it quite a bit lighter while still maintaining the strength. So back to our pure ref area, and let's talk about this. So here we have a plastic part and a die cast part, both the same. And when we're dealing with die cast parts and plastic parts, we have to worry about this draft angle, the angle which basically is where the mail tool is inserted. And you can see that typically a draft angle is between a quarter degree and two degrees. Sometimes there can be zero degree draft angles if you have collapsible parts in the middle. We're gonna focus mostly on zero degree draft angles. In machining, like we're doing here, we can have zero degree draft angles because the bit can be vertical, can be straight vertical. The other thing about a bit is that a lot of times in machining, it's round at the bottom. And as you can see, this is round at the bottom and this is round at the bottom. And the reason for that, even when we're molding, is that a lot of stress occurs on these particular angles. That stress provides places for the part to fail. So if we look at this particular object here, this is a machined object. And we can see we can have these radiuses down here which are helping to support it. And on the edges up here, they're still crisp because that bit, as it goes around, it leaves a nice crisp edge. And there could be a final polish pass taken to create more of a radius bevel there. So let's talk about how do we create an object with this type of detail in such a way as that we can continually to edit these details. In other words, how do we make it non-destructive? Okay, let's look at this base object and see how it was constructed. It's done using some of the previously discussed nitrox methods. We'll select this object first and I'm gonna turn off all the modifiers and you can see that this is nothing more than a simple polygon shape that has been created. It goes inside of this circular element right here. And of course it's editable. Okay, so the first modifier we're gonna look at is the bevel modifier. You notice that we are beveling only vertices. If I tab into here, you'll see that these vertices right here all have a bevel weight of 1.0. So we've got this set up to only vertices and weight, and we tab out and we turn this on, we get this nice radius form. Next, we look at the solidify modifier. Here we're gonna offset it at zero. So that means we're gonna offset it on both sides equally. So let's turn that on. You see that that's exactly what we've done. Next, we're gonna add another bevel modifier. And this time we're gonna use a weight as well. So let's take a look at this. We'll go back into here and we'll see that these actual edges now have mean bevel weights as well. So all of these right here have a mean bevel weight of 1.0. And when we go back in here and turn this on, we see that now we've applied a bevel to the outside of the solidified object. Now we're gonna go into the Booleans. And the Booleans, as we see when we plug this in, we're gonna add this shape. Before we add this shape, let's take a look at this shape. So I'm gonna go in here, set these to wire. So what we have here is fairly simple. We'll take this, this first shape and I'm gonna turn off the viewport fizz, and you'll see that this is actually just a simple square plane that is oriented directly in the center of this other object. And when we turn on the bevel and we use weight because we've actually grabbed all these vertices and gave them mean bevel weight of one, we turn that on. Now we've taken that plane and we've turned it into a circular plane. Next we'll go into solidify. And again, we use the offset to zero. We apply that and now we have a solid cylinder. And now we will duplicate this to create this object. And we're going to subtract this object using a Boolean subtraction modifier. And when we do that, we get this object right here. And so this is the object that we're going to actually Boolean add onto this object. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to select this object 
and I'll set it to bounds and we'll go over here and we'll see that the boolean object that we're going to apply is that same object so now we have one object that's all together and then I'm going to add a bevel to this so this bevel is going to add another little bevel across here you can see that we have some shading artifacts in here right across here and here and right in there and so that's why we added this weighted normal modifier and when we turn that on it fixes it all okay so now let's talk about the rib cutters and how we create those so first what we're going to do is we're going to select this object and we're going to duplicate it shift d to duplicate it and then right click on it to leave it in place and now with it up here i'm going to just go in here and call this rib cutter so we know what it is and then with my cursor in this view i'm going to hit the forward slash over the, in the numpad and now this is the only object in this scene so i'm going to go hit the five button to be in orthographic view and then i'll hit the tab and you'll see this is where we're at so first before i do anything else i want to go ahead and take this and i'm going to delete all the modifiers the next thing because i know and we talked about this earlier that we want these walls to be all the same thicknesses so i'm going to come in here i'm going to tab into this i'll hit the three key so that now i'm in polygon mode i'll select the polygon i'll hit i for inset which is the same as this button right here and as you can see i'm insetting and once i've done that i have a number up here and I want the thickness to be 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Enter, and then with this selected, I'll do a control I to select the opposite of it, and then X, and I'll delete the faces. And so this is what we have to start with. Next, I'll hit the K, which is the knife key, and that's over here also, but I'm gonna hit the K, and I'm gonna start drawing some of these center lines for my ribs. So I'll go here to here, kind of snap in there and then once I've done that I hit the E key to end that and I'll keep continuing so I'll go here to here E here to here E and then I'll take one here and I'll hit the C key constrain and notice that's constrained to here so all of these are also shown down here just in case you're wondering and once I've done I hit the return key and now I've actually added all of these segments to this polygon. So I'm going to hit A, select them all, and I'm going to turn this to zero and the mean bevel weight to zero. So I'm going to put the edges and the vertices to zero. So that's what we have. Now that this is all said and done, and I'll be back in the three mode, which is the polygon. I want to make sure I go up here and I click on this and I say I want to be in my individual origins. So then I'll hit the I key twice. And when I hit it twice, it's going to allow me to build this, which is going to be my cutter plane objects. I'm going to click here and I'll go in here 0 0.05 again, hit return, we do the same thing, control I and X, delete the faces. And now we have our cutter objects. And then I'm going to go grab these and I'm just going to delete these X, delete those vertices. So here we have it. And I'll tab back out. This is going to be our rib cutter. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to hit the numpad forward slash to get us out. And with it still selected, I'm going to add a solidify modifier. And with that solidify modifier, I will add a thickness and I'll hit the Alt Z button so I can see what that looks like from top. And let's just move this something like this. Okay, so now we have that. We know that's going to be our cutter. And next we're going to say, let's go ahead and add a bevel modifier and we'll make it six segments. And that looks pretty good. And I'll Alt Z back to here. And now with the selected, I'm going to make it a wire. I'll grab this object and I will add right above this weight. I'm going to actually hide the weight one and right above it or below the bevel, I'm going to add a Boolean modifier. So there it is. I'll select this object. And you can see now we have our cutout. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to select this and set to bounds so we can just see what we have going on here. Next, we're going to want to add a little chamfer right around these edges right here. So we're going to do that again in front of this weighted normal modifier. So I'm going to add a modifier. I'll call it bevel and I'll move it up. 
So we have the Boolean, the bevel, and we have the weight. And this one I'm going to set to angle and turn off clamp override. And I'm going to just move this so it's just a little tiny bevel. So that's good. So that looks pretty good. The only problem is that we've got some weirdness going on over here. And so I kind of wonder why that is. And the real reason for that is because if we look at this line segment, you see that it's kind of confused as to where it should go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select this outer box, oh, this one right here. And this was the bevel for that. And instead of 15 segments, I'm going to make it 14. Now it's a beyond that. And now if we look at this, we'll see that we it looks just perfectly good. And we have our little bevel along the side. And we're in pretty good shape. Now the last thing to do here is to make sure that while auto smooth is turned on, we'll go over here. We also want to make sure that when we tab into this object, select the polygon and we're going to go and say shade smooth and tab back out. And now we have a good smooth object. Looks good. I'm looking at this object and it looks pretty good. I don't see much in the way of normal artifacting. So if I select this and go to the modifiers, I still have that weighted normal. If I put that on, it might make it a little better. I really can't tell. I'll leave it on. It's always nice to have a weighted normal at the end of the stack. So if I go ahead and let's turn on my floor plane and turn on Eevee, you can see this is our machined aluminum part. So this is how you create a ribbed design that is non-destructive using the Nitrox 3D method.